Ah, cue the hype music. Listen, listen, I am an Atlanta Hawks fan. I'll admit it, I'm not ashamed of it. And if you want to be one too, you have until August 21st, 729 Eastern Time to purchase your ticket onto the bandwagon. And for any of the doubters, we will prove you wrong. I can guarantee you guys that the Atlanta Hawks will go 98-0. I would put money on it, but I don't feel the need for free cash. I already make enough of my $10 an hour job. In the 2015 season, we had four All-Stars. In the 2022 NBA season, let's shoot for nine. We will destroy the league. We, we will. If I should do more of those kind of intros, let me know in the comments because I don't even, I don't even know what that was. Jokes aside, I actually put 500 that the Hawks would win out the division. So as long as we beat the Miami Heat, I am happy. But I'm going to give you guys five major reasons that we are at minimum a top three seed. Reason number one, we found our coach. Like last year, we went 27 and 11 under... Uh, Nate McMillan as the head coach and we went on an amazing playoff run and the reason we weren't a top three seed or four seed was because our first coach didn't even like their own players like they like okay what's his name <laughs> I already forgot his name Lloyd Pierce did not want Trey Young to play like Trey Young he wanted to play like some traditional point guard or you know just someone he wasn't that wasn't him like when Steve Nash said oh the way you're playing and foul baiting that isn't basketball Lloyd Pierce was like yeah yeah it isn't let's just uh let's stop you from doing that Trey and it was like that's his game and even though some of it is getting taken out this next season i do think he's better without it but to tell a player that to not play like he does when he's a superstar it's just crazy to me but yeah just from like the body language of like how the players are playing on the court in the second half of the season versus the first half of the season it wasn't because we started winning it's because our players actually enjoy playing under our coach like even i'm pretty sure like multiple hawks fans or not hawks fans hawks players have admitted that like they didn't like lloyd pierce and he's a good person but just coaching isn't for some people and i just don't think it's for him maybe as an assistant coach but not head coaching reason number two injuries happen i really understand it and that's why I think the reason number two is that we have the best bench in the league. And it's it's not close. Or at least I don't think it's close. You know, we have DeLon Wright as our backup point guard. A really, really underrated point guard. I thought he was underrated before he came to the Hawks. But yes, he's like 6'4", 6'5", can defend, which is very rare in point guards nowadays. Um, he can shoot. He has like 38 or 39% from three last season. He can finish inside. He has, he has size. We know this. He can finish inside. He's just a really good backup point guard. I'd say he's easily like a top five backup point guard. I say like maybe you could say Dennis Schroeder's better um, if Jordan Clarkson counts as a point guard, but like there's not too many point guards are taking over him as a backup. And he kind of he goes hand in hand with Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter is also a really good defending shooting guard, and then he's re a really good shooter. We know about Kevin Herter. He saved an entire game seven for the Atlanta Hawks. And then Cam Reddish, also a really good defender. Our defense is going to be really good defensively. Our only liability on defense is Gallinari. And he is just, he's a stretch four. You know, he's nothing more. He can score the ball. He can facilitate a little bit. He can rebound a little bit, but he's not defending. And then at the five, if you guys didn't know, he was he's hurt right now. But Okungwu, Okungwu is a really, really good rim protector. He just kind of lacked a little bit of IQ last year. But I feel like he really picked, he's going to pick that up in this next season. You know, being off the bench. Because, yeah, he's out to like December. But he's going to be like learning from Clint Capella, just watching him. And I feel like he's really going to be taking in Capella's IQ. And then Okungwu has like the perimeter defense or the lateral quickness to keep up with guards and a switch and a pick and roll like it's insane i think we easily have the best defensive bench and then offensively we are still really good and by the way that's not even all of our bench like we have lou williams as a third streamer we have solomon hill who hopefully doesn't touch the floor but he's not that bad and he's definitely like a heart guy like he's gonna go for those hustle plays we have jalen johnson the 20th pick who actually 15 minutes ago i learned he got hurt in training camp in the first hour which really sucks that really does and then, you know, we have Gorgie Jang as a backup, or not a backup backup center. So I, I just think like, man, the Hawks bench is the best in the league. The third reason we're going to go insane this season is our youth. Like every single player I think is going to get better besides Gallinari and Solomon Hill. Trey Young, I feel like is really going to, I feel like he's just going to be smarter playmaking wise. It's not even that he was that dumb playmaking wise, but he averaged almost four turnovers a game. If you guys want to know the reason, if you're not Hawks fans, he 
tries and fails the foul bait so like non-hawks fans don't watch the games they're like okay yeah trace foul, bo foul baiting is lame it was lame for us too because half the time he wouldn't he'd fail out especially in the playoffs like the refs wouldn't call it and it would just lead to a turnover so like just just taking that rule out and eliminating that from Trey Young's game it's gonna eliminate his turnovers at least one a game if not like one and a half or two turnovers a game but yeah Trey Young's gonna get smarter I think Bogdan just had an insane leap in the regular season if he can just carry that out in the next regular season he's gonna be insane DeAndre Hunter I feel like I feel like recently players who have gotten hurt for a long time they come back better because they really work on their skills and it slow it does slow like the delay time of like being healthy again but yeah, they really work on their game and I don't I just think DeAndre Hunter is going to come back even better he's going to be like at least like an 18 point per game scorer an elite defender and that's all we need from him John Collins just in the playoffs you know learn how to play defense so hopefully that can carry out in the regular season uh Cam Reddish went off in the playoffs Kevin Herter went off in the playoffs well, hopefully both of them make a jump we're just so young and every year we get better and I just feel like this year should also be a year where maybe the stats aren't going up but like the defense is better or we just know that okay that player is doing more things right and the player that I really think is going to make a jump is a Kongwu, you know, because he is coming back from injury. He can learn, he can learn from Capella. And I just think, man, he might come back as like the best backup center in the league. I'm trying to think right now, maybe right now it's like Robert Williams. So maybe a Kongwu will be second, but that's still really good. The fourth reason I have the Atlanta Hawks so high is chemistry. I feel like a lot of other teams, like they, maybe they got better, but they're adding like a whole bunch of other players, especially like the Miami Heat. They added an entire new point guard and Kyle Lowry. And like, I don't even know who, who is their backup point guard? Is Tyler Harrow going to run point guard? Cause, or like maybe Gabe Vincent, I don't know. But they got rid of Kendrick Nunn and um, Goran Dragic. It's just like a whole chemistry thing. It might be missing in the first part of the season. Think about some other teams like the Celtics. They got Josh Richardson. They got Dennis Schroeder. They got like they just got a whole bunch. Like every player, every team got a bunch of new players. All the Hawks did was get a new backup point guard and a new third string who's going to play backup center. And we just went on an amazing playoff run. Like we're going to have the chemistry. The Bucks might have more chemistry, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think the Bucks really care that much to win in the regular season and my reason number five is you know the bucks and nets are only kind of worried about each other and they might like one of the teams might be worried about the hawks or the heat but not like that much to try and avoid them the atlanta hawks want to avoid they, they only want to play one of the nets or bucks and by getting the one seed that's how you do that unless the bucks or nets fall to the fourth seed which i don't think will happen unless either of the teams are actually trying to avoid the hawks or the heat they probably don't care as much about the one seed as the two or three seed and when we're talking about the rest of the teams, like the Celtics and the Heat and the Pacers and the Knicks and all, all those teams I in the Bulls. But I just feel like I just feel like we're the better team. And I, I don't think it's really close. So I'm only comparing us to the Nets and Bucks saying like, hey, the Nets have injuries they always deal with and they don't care enough to get the one seed. I think the Bucks probably don't care enough to get the one seed unless Giannis is really going for another MVP season, which he might. I mean, he deserves it after a finals MVP. He might be like, hey, I want to go chase some accolades. And that's not a bad thing. Chasing accolades in the regular season, I mean, what else are you going to do? Just sit around and do nothing? It doesn't really make sense. I, mean, I guess you could rest a little bit, but that's just not Giannis. But Giannis, could, he could put up MVP numbers just by playing 31 minutes a game. It's insane. But yeah, uh, those are the five reasons. If you like the intro, let me know in the comments. Please comment. Just comment something. Comment something. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm trying to post every like three or four days. And peace.